Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to talk about turning our back on God and what is the result of that. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii, te Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii, te Spiritui Sancto. Sucutoram Principio et Nuc et Semper et te Seculi Seculorum. Amen. All right, so today we're going to kind of go back through salvation history and look at some Old Testament antecedents about what happens when you turn your back on God. And I think most Catholics who are, who are pretty honest and introspective can look around today and, and probably say this is the worst we've ever been in Christian history since probably the last really bad persecution, which is during Diocletian in the late third century. Uh, we're, we're in a bad place, I think, overall as well. You can see we kind of had the peak of Christendom for 1,500 years, certainly. Probably the peak of peaks was maybe 12th, 13th, 14th century before the Enlightenment. And then, you know, we've had definitely some issues during the 19th century. But now, I mean, at least in those times, even in the Protestant world, we were still kind of imbued in certain Christian morals. Right? You know, like, like fornication is wrong, stealing is wrong, and so forth. But now every virtue is a vice, every vice is a virtue. And we live in a world now that has really turned its back on, on traditional Christian values in general. So let's look at the Old Testament. Let's, let's look, because the Old Testament is, is great to look at in terms of, of salvation history. And of course, for other reasons, like it's, it's the Old Covenant that's fulfilled by Christ. And you see a lot of antecedents that Christ and, and, and the church fulfill. But there's always been a time we've turned our back on God. I mean, of course, you can go back to Adam and Eve, right? You definitely you can see that. You see Cain killing Abel. You look at the, the, the world during Noah. Now, great, you know, granted, this is before Abraham's revelation and so forth. But again, there was wickedness at the time. Then you can fast forward past Abraham. You can look at Lot and dealing with the Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, later on, you can go to certainly with Moses and the Israelites, like how Often do they turn their back on God? They're whining. Oh, what? We leave slavery just to starve in the desert. You get that. Of course, you get the golden calf and the idolatry uh, with with the, the Israelites, and then they get into the promised land. Then if you read Judges, it's the same thing. They they revert to idolatry. Look at Eli's sons. If you look at the beginning of First Samuel, you know there's always this turning our back on what we know to be truth. And then you certainly see it, I think, in the kind of the Davidic kingdom. So if you're not familiar, Saul was the first king. And Samuel was like, you don't, you don't want a king. You don't want a king. Oh, we want a king. Oh, okay. So they get Saul. Saul was a bad king. He, you know, he was worshiping or delving into the occult. He wanted to talk to Samuel's ghost. And then we get David. David's a pretty good king. But of course, you know, he sinned quite a bit. We talk about it in the episode on purgatory. And then after Solomon, the kingdoms divide. And then you have the northern and southern kingdoms. And then if you read 1 Kings, 2 Kings, you read the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. We've talked about that before. And you read like all the books during the time before both the northern and southern kingdoms were eventually conquered and taken away uh, to Babylon. It's, it's the same thing. All the prophets turn away from sin. Turn away from sin. Stop idolatry. Stop marrying foreign women. Stop whoring around. It's the same thing. You hear all the... And then what happens? God's eventually just like... They're all, they're all captured. The northern kingdom eventually is dispersed. You really don't hear about them. Some of them do come back. And then they merge with other people. This is the Gentiles that are hated in, in Jesus' time. Eventually, the, the, the southern kingdom does come back. You see that kind of in Nehemiah, if you read that. But it's the same thing. And then later on, right, all the prophets during this period, same thing. Turn away from sin. Turn away from sin. And then you get the, in the Maccabees. You see the same thing in the Maccabees. The, the Jews at the time are starting to adopt pagan ways, the Hellenistic ways. This is after Alexander the Great. And it's the same thing. And then, you know, eventually we get up to, to Christ's time. And then let's talk about now, though. So you, you see the president of us turning our back on God, and God just takes away his protection and his blessing. Why would God protect America? Let's just keep it specific to America. Why would he protect America right now? We've been aborting babies and euthanizing old people. For how long now? 1973? I mean, uh, uh, you know, and again, you know, before 1973, certainly there were babies being aborted and so forth. You know, ancient Rome, they knew how to take certain herbs and so forth to abort babies. But it's fundamentally different when it's sanctioned by the state. So 1973, we've aborted, what, something like 900,000 children a year? 
Where is the protection from conception to natural death? We don't really, we focus a lot on abortion, which we should, but we don't focus a lot on euthanasia, embryonic stem cell research, all these things like that. We've turned our back on God on all these things as a whole. And I'm not talking about you, you know, you're part of the remnant and you still are very pro-life. I'm talking about American society in general. You can talk about all the gender, the gender stuff. I mean, we're going to keep it vague because YT is very pro all of that. You look at that. You look at just where every virtue is a vice and every vice is a virtue. So drunkenness, you see it in movies, you see all the Judd Apatow comedies, everybody should get high and be drunk all the time. You just see sleeping around and fornication is very normal. You see this going back to 80s and 90s. Friends is all about hooking up with each other. And so you see all the children watching this. And so it's all normalized. So this is the time in American history, statistically, that we've gone to church the least, not just Catholics, but in general. Every year you get more non, non-affiliated, but non-practicing Christians. That number keeps going up, the agnostics, the atheists. We are turning our back on Catholic values, Christian values. How long is God going to withhold his justice? Because God is merciful. And you see this in the Old Testament. I forgot to mention this. But you see it in the Old Testament. We keep, or you know, our spiritual ancestors, keep turning their back on God. But God always provides them mercy, right? He knows their wayward, he knows their fall, but he loves them because he loves us, and he keeps providing them mercy, right, in golden periods. But you look now, it's, we are in a crap time. We are in a horrendous time of evil and persecution. And why would God protect America? Yeah, you can look at the, the example with Abraham negotiating with the angel, you know, if you find 10 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, and so for certain, there's certainly righteous people left in, in, in the West. But as a whole, as a society, as a whole, just like right before Noah, as a whole, we have turned our back on God. So at what point is he just going to say, here it comes, <laughs> the sheetrock's going to hit the fan, here comes the time of judgment. Now, if that happens, I mean, in some ways we deserve it. Now, maybe you don't deserve it, but that's what the book of Job's all about. You might not deserve it. You might maybe have been righteous. But in, in a general way, as a society, we have all deserve it when the bad things happen. And really, we have to be introspective and be honest with ourselves and be like, well, I mean, look, look at society in general. You know, we fought the good fight, so to speak, like Paul says. But look at society in general. And, and you know, it, it does deserve to have a chastisement. And with the chastisement, and we know in general, with suffering comes wisdom, right? With suffering comes a deeper faith. So ultimately, if God does turn his back on America, and you can say he already has, but certainly really turns his back on it, there's going to be growth that comes from it. Yes, you know, we can talk about apocalypse. We can talk about the persecution that's going to happen to the righteous. Many will be martyred. You know, some will survive. But there, it's going to happen, and it honestly deserves to happen on one level or another. But for those who can get through it and those who don't, apostatize and forsake their faith, they'll be rewarded. And the, and, the, and the final thing I want to say is don't ever apostatize. Don't ever forsake your faith. Christ even says, you know, don't worry about those who can take your body. Worry about those who can take your soul. And there's so many scriptural examples and in the catechism about you got to take care of the soul. The body corrupts the body. It doesn't matter. Of course, you should be a good steward of it. But ultimately, that's not the number one thing is what do I have to do to stay alive? No, I mean, the, the saints, the martyred saints, who are wearing their white robes in, in, in heaven right now, they didn't abide by that. No, you have to protect your soul and stay away from the pleasures of this world. You see it in James, you see it in 1 John. He talks about it. Whoever is in friendship with the world is with enmity with Christ. So we don't want to be in friendship with the world. We don't want to start co-opting and, and loving all the things of this world. And I talk about in that episode on there's no such thing as a liberal Catholic and so forth. So just kind of focus on these things. Sorry, this episode went long-winded. Guys, post in the comments. Let me know what you think. Do you think America has turned its back completely on Christ? Do you think a chastisement is coming? I'd love to hear your take. Please hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Share with like-minded people. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.